Plenty of timber, water, open country too. Well, you can get a crop of corn in the ground without too much trouble. At least it ain't a pile of rocks like New England. Weather's tolerable. Summers are hot, but not like the tide water where you just about boil in your own skin. Ticks can be bothersome. Still, I think you can see why men who had never in their lives had anything to call their own would be willing to do just about anything to claim a piece of it. And let me tell you, anything and everything is pretty much what we had to do. I'm getting ahead of myself here. A few years back during the French and Indian Wars, King George offered a bounty to any man that gave service. 5,000 acres. <laughs> Lord Almighty, can you imagine? Well, West Virginia, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, all long since staked out. If we wanted land of our own, there was nothing left for it but to head west over the mountains. In the early spring of 74, I led a group of very brave men out of Pennsylvania and into the dark and bloody ground. You talk about some trusting fellows. Oh, I'd been here once before with a survey party back in 67, but these men had not. There was a treaty with the Shawnee in place, so we cast off in our canoes loaded with as many supplies as we could fit, which wasn't much. Once we arrived, we started exploring and clearing and claiming. We were gonna make a home for ourselves and our families, a place where we could be free. Of course, we knew this meant there'd be some hardships, but I don't think any of us could have imagined the ones that would be coming our way. Finally, the last tag. <laughs> Settle down, settle down. Yeah. Oh. I got the numbers here. Draw our lot, so it's four lots. Hell five was it? Do this in a civilized manner. So well, what do you propose? Yeah. Let's go by height. All us goes first. Oh no no no. Let's do it by age. Ah. Let's do it alphabetically. Oh. All right, Tab. Thank you. All right. Hamilton. All right, Reverend. James Drake. Oh. Sadowski. All right, Splatter. You're good to have him. That leaves me with lot number eight. This is quite the accomplishment, men. I know those cabins are as crude as hog pens, but they'll serve our needs, I think. Still, we've earned the right to cut loose a little bit. What do you say we have some dinner? A little bit to drink? Yeah. All right. Now you're talking. All right. Hope you got the good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, anything new to report, gentlemen? Me and Chapel was traveling four miles west to Salt River the other day. Found another stream flowing in the same direction. It was a sight to behold, all right. River came so thick you could barely make it to the water's edge, and the water was so clear you could see about a mile deep. Cap, you think that stream's been labeled yet? Not to my knowledge, but with all the survey parties out here, it could have five names by now. <laughs> well, for now, why don't we call it the chapel? No, no, no. I don't want nothing named after me. I just want my claim, that's all. <laughs> well, James, as a minister, I'm hoping you're planning to build a church soon. One thing at a time, Reverend. One thing at a time. Hey, Sadowski, heard you and Calvin found a great site for hunting. Oh, sure did. Over by Fountain Blue, lots of game and cane to hide in. Y'all might want to spend a couple days hunting for the camp out there soon. How long is the camp? Well, who's coming, Captain? Who is it? What? Daniel Boone and Michael Stoner. No. The real Daniel Boone? No, the fake Daniel Boone. 
Don't embarrass the chaplain. He's just a man. Yeah. I wasn't expecting either one of them out here this year. James Harris. Daniel. See James. Oh, good. James. I heard you're out here in these parts dealing with settlement, James. What I can see here, y'all got quite a bit of confidence in a short period of time. <laughs> well, it's not been easy, I'll tell you that. But we do have a great group of guys here that aren't afraid to stay at it from Dondle Dust. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Say, it's been a little over two years now since I've seen you. Yep. What are you all doing out this far this summer? Doing a little hunting or surveying? Speaking of game, has it been this summer? Unbelievable. Well, we don't have to go more than a hundred yards in any direction to find something for dinner. James, we're only interested in hides. Dunmore ain't paying us enough for this trip. We don't come away with some good skins. Dunmore? Yeah. You know, the governor of Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're here, James. Dunmore's hired me and Stoner here to take a quick look through uh, Cane Tuck and one of you surveying parties. You don't have safe passage back to Virginia. Seems like the Shawnee are on the war path because that treaty is no good. Now, wait a minute, what's that all about? Well, Shawnee, they're apparently aggravated about some uprising in the north. Oh, the Shawnee are always aggravated, or at least rumored to be. You know which one it is? Well, all I can tell you, we was hunting down by the falls, I don't know, two or three weeks ago, when two kickapoo come pounding downstream in a canoe like the daggone thing was on fire. They was waving a white shirt. I guess they thought we were going to shoot at them. I don't know. But what they told us well, the Shawnee were aiming to kill anybody they found on their river. So, does Dunmore expect us to just leave? Dunmore? I don't even think he knows you out here. I know he have no idea what you're building, being y'all from Pennsylvania. Oh, oh, now, we're not out here for Pennsylvania. We don't represent them. We're on our own. Okay. That's right. Well, James, I can't get over what you built here. You know, when I stayed in that cave east of here, I don't know, about five years ago, I knew this was the perfect spot. I knew this would be a good place someday to maybe build a cabin and send for my family. <laughs> well, Daniel, you can do just that. All the cabins are clean, but we do have several lots. Lots? Like a town? Yep. yep. We got several lots surveyed up and down the street here. Some with cabins, some without. Well, this is quite the accomplishment. But what about the Shawnee? Are y'all aiming to take your chances? No. I am. Yeah. And I suspect these lads will as well. Damn yeah. right. Well, I've been aiming to make this my home for years now. If y'all gonna stick around too, I reckon I will. What about you, Stoner? Yeah, you go ahead and build your cabin, Daniel. I'll wait around till morning and then head back to report back to Virginia, report back to Dunmore. All right. Well, come on in, let me show you around, maybe get you something to eat. All hey, right. that sounds good. Well, James, you know I wasn't aiming to have a roof over my head tonight anyway. By the way, what are you gonna call this little town of yours? <laughs> one thing at a time, Daniel, one thing at a time. You are a chief the others will listen to. Your only hope is for all to walk the path together. The Shawnee will never walk the same path as the Shamanese. The long knives are not going away, Standing Bear. To pass the tomahawk and the war belt and, and make war on them will solve nothing. They are Yahweh. He's locusts, always taking what is not theirs, always taking more than they need. There is more than enough to share here in the Kentucky, our great meadow. Share, yes. They take as if it all belongs to them. They listen to no one. They answer to no one. Even the English governor pays for the scouts. There 
there is a, an Okima, a chief among the Long Knives, named Harris. He is better than most whites. I will speak with him. It may be too late. The Tomahawk and War Belt are already being passed among the nations. But we must try. I have scouting parties now. I will hear what they have to say before I choose our path. I must return to my village. The journey is long and I have much to think on. Safe journey, brother. May the Great Spirit guide you. May Kaysen the Tuas also guide you as well. trading posts and villages. I don't know how long the gun hunting will hold out. I have no respect for Shawnee Way. But there is much land between the Great River and Cherokee land. I don't see how so few hunters can make it There are a few now. Won't be long before more come. Okima, there's many long knives in the Kanchiki this summer from the Great Falls to the mountains. We've been watching them. They stomp around like they're at home, but they're not. They're trespassing. The white man has built many small villages in the heart of the land of the many springs from the Great Meadow to the Kanchiki. But I tell you, Okima, this is not good. They are invading our hunting grounds. While you were gone, I have parlayed with the Delaware about what path to choose with these white men. We can stand our ground. If these settlers can be pushed back, then perhaps others will be too scared to follow. Are you suggesting we make war with these white men? Uh, who would lead this raid? Thorn Falcon and I know where they camp and their ways. On our return, we discuss ways to rid these settlers of their sacred of our sacred ground. They stay together, but you break out for days at a time. With the white men separating like they do, we could take them with just a few braves or even just a few guns. Surely these white men have friends, relatives, who will demand justice for their death. Mm -hmm. Rotting deer and sword and falcon speak through. And I like the patient Delaware. They, they may hunt and leave but they must not be allowed to settle the sacred hunting ground. They must be pushed out. Hmm. Aki! Thank <laughs> you. 
Uh, what a miserable night. I am soaked to the bone. I tried to lay on my rifle all night just to keep it dry. I gave up. It's gonna take me an hour or more to get mine dry and operational. Say, should we wake Pogue and the other? Uh, as miserable as it was, they can sleep through it, let them. You hear something? Could be breakfast. What do you see out there? Not sure yet. He is headed back toward the village. We are few, they are many. I have lived as long as I have, because I don't go chasing 50 long knives. Who wants to kill me? I lead our village, you do as I say. It doesn't matter. Once the other men have seen what we have done, they will leave this land. I hope you're right. Take what we like and go. You may be able to catch the one that ran north. Like a fool, he ran away from his friend. <laughs> now he's alone. Oh, oh, what? 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 They got Cohen and Hamilton. What do you mean? They got them. They're dead. Oh my oh, Lord. Lord. Just slow down. Uh, what happened exactly? Oh my God. I was still sleeping. It was about daybreak. And all of a sudden we heard two shots. Bang, bang. Cowan and Hamilton were dead. Oh. I grabbed my oh. rifle and headed back this way. Kodowski took off running the other. You ran all the way? That's almost four miles. Then what happened? I tossed my gun across the creek. Two engines started fighting over it. That's how I got away. Uh, did they go after Sadowski too? I don't know. My God. All right, men. We need to be ready in case they come this way. Slaughter, you watch over that way. Kaplan, you watch over that way. Captain, I feel real bad running like I did. Don't. If you hadn't run, we wouldn't have known that. But the threat. But still. William, we wouldn't have even known they were out there. As far as we knew, y'all were still out there hunting. I thought it had been way too peaceful. What about Sadowski? Do we need to get a search party out for him? He went running hard northwest last I saw. <coughs> the hell? He's probably still running. Well, we can't get risk getting caught out in the woods with these murdered Shawnee around. We'll just have to wait until he shows up. There's not much we can do for him until he does. If he does. Right now, we just need to be ready in case that party's heading this way. Captain, what are we going to do about this? We came out here for land. Nothing got our scouts filled up. Hey, this is what I warned you all about. I'd like to stay and make this my home, but I'm going back east. I was shot at. I, for one, am ready to go back till this settles down. Now, men, we've worked too hard and done too much work over the summer to run away after one attack. One attack? Men are dead, damn it. Now, hold on. We knew there was a chance this could happen. It could have just been three or four renegades. It doesn't mean the entire Indian nation is on us. James, that's exactly what it does mean. We've known for months now that Shawnee are our race. Y'all do what you want, but I'm going back to the judge. I'm just glad there's only a few Indians. We all could be dead. And still could be. What should we do, Kat? Should we head back east like boom? You're all three men, Slaughter. I can't stop you. But I think we just need to settle down and think for a minute. And we all know that the Delaware Indians are our friends. Let me speak to the Chief Longwinter. They've always been good to me, and I trust they'll speak the truth. But right now, let's just get inside and get locked down tight.
Shawnee intend on starting a war, we're going to be there. I'll be damned if I let them come and take everything we fought so hard for. But right now, we just need to get back and warn everybody. Yes, sir. Ready? 
You wish to make a peace? Fight no more and return to our home. <laughs> Sir, you have lost this battle. The only thing we will expect is your surrender. You can't do this. Very well. The terms of a treaty are simple. You and your army must leave the Virginia Territory and never return. In addition, the Shawnee hereby relinquish all claims to the land known as the Kentucky. Unconscious, him throwing you over his shoulder and using your body as a club. Every word of it true, Judge. Every word of it true. Yes, of course, of course. Uh, actually, Mr. Boone, it's it's about the frontier that I wish to speak to you. Oh, the frontier. Think about maybe heading out west. Take a look around for yourself. Yeah, something of that nature, but a bit more ambitious. Well, I see. What does that have to do with me? Mr. Bone, I've heard a great deal about you, and if even half of it is true, it leads me to believe that you are the man that we need. We, myself, a group of friends and business associates, we have formed a company. Well, I see. What does that have to do with me, Judge? Well, we intend on uh, purchasing the greater part of the Kentucky territory and uh, eventually petitioning for a colony status with the crown. We call ourselves the Transylvania Company. What do you think? What do I think? I think you must be drunk. Who do you plan on buying it from? Well, the, the Cherokee. We plan on meeting with a delegation of the Cherokee this March to offer terms. The Cherokee. They claim they've got the right to sell you Kentucky. Uh, well, I can think of a few folks who would take issue with that, Judge. Ah, but you forget, Mr. Boone, the fruits of your great victory in Lord Dunmore's war. I wasn't much of a war judge. I've been in bigger tavern brawls. Nevertheless, the outcome was the same. The Shawnee gave up claim to all lands south of the Ohio River. Oh, uh, so you figure that means? Well, if it's if the Shawnee no longer have claim, who but the Cherokee? 
Well, James here and those other Pennsylvania folks are starters. You know, they've got a nice little show that started out there. I was thinking about maybe uh, filing a claim and bringing my family out. Filing a claim, you say? Exactly who would you be filing it with? Well, Virginia, of course. Yes, of course, of course. A bit tricky, though, since uh, Virginia has not accepted jurisdiction over Kentucky. Well, Doug, we figure we can take our chances. Mr. Booth, I admire men like you. Risk is your stock in trade. You've grown used to living beyond the conveniences of society to be living on nothing more than your skill and experience. Well, Judge, you smell smoke. Is that just what you're blowing up my backside? <laughs> not at all, Mr. Boone, not at all. But living by your wits and flintlock is all well and good if you have no one depending upon you but yourself. But you say you're going to take your wife and family out into the frontier as well? Well, what of it? When you're out there making a, a life for yourself, uh, wouldn't you like to have a legacy, Mr. Boone? Something to pass on to your children? Do you think you can accomplish that by throwing in with this group of ragtag so ex-soldiers and farmers? Watch what comes out of your mouth next, Judge. Those ragtag ex-soldiers and farmers are friends of mine. James Herod is a fine man. I, I, I no doubt, I have no doubts about their quality, Mr. Boone. And I have heard that Herod is a natural leader. But he lacks the thing that we find in you. Fortitude. When your son was murdered and your party gave up and went back to North Carolina, you did not give up. They were overcome by the enmity and the risk, but not you. Although it is unfortunate that their lack of conviction left you and your family, and how shall I say it delicately, uh, tight circumstances. Now please don't take offense, Mr. Boone, because none is intended. But it is no secret you pretty much lost everything when they abandoned the venture. Well, Judge, my affairs are none of your business. We've always gotten by, we always will. But wouldn't you like to do more than just get by? When you're out there making a new life for your family, wouldn't it be of some comfort to know that there were a, a group of men of substantial means and uh, resources behind you, that these advantages would be at your disposal? Well, Judge, what is it you want from me exactly? To be our chief guide and scout. Lead parties through the Cumberland Gap and into Kentucky. And in exchange, the company is prepared to give you a substantial amount of land and a position of influence and respect once the county is settled. Well, Judge, I've always been told if something sounds too good to be true, it usually is. Are you sure all this is legal? Oh, it's perfectly legal under English law. English law, yes, but what about Virginia or North Carolina law? Well, there may be a few points to be worked out. Uh, what did you say that settlement of Herod's was called? Herod's Town. Herod's Town. Herod's Town. Has a nice ring. But don't you think that Boone's Town or perhaps Boone's Borough has just as nice a ring? I believe it does, Judge. I believe it does. Then we have an accord, Mr. Boone. We you have do. an accord. We do. Some mighty fine duck, and I'd be glad to share some if you like. Oh, well, thank you, sir. 
Oh, I do believe I could give you something to eat. Mm. Mm. No, I've been, I've been hearing a great deal about Kentucky. You know, the, the settlement's going up around here. Mm. Figured I'd travel out from Virginia, see what all that talk was about. Mm. Mm. I must say, Kentucky is a wondrous place. It's a richer, more beautiful land I believe has never before been seen in America. Well, I'll have to write my brother about it. Yes, sir. Yes. Sure is beautiful. Mm. Oh, so my friend, uh, Captain Heron, he's found a little town out this way. And he wouldn't happen to know where my fine Captain Heron would be. Yes, sir, that's Harristown. That's where I live. I can show you the way if you'd like. Oh, why, well, what good fortune it was running into you today. You know, not only did I receive an excellent meal, but you're my own personal guide to Harristown. Mm. Mm. Lead the way, sir. Yeah, how fortunate it was. For you. Come, follow me. <laughs> Captain Aaron, Captain Aaron, you have a visitor. Why, well, uh, George Rogers Clark. If you are in a spot for sore eyes, I wasn't expecting you out this way. Ah, come to see what you brave fellows are doing here in Kentucky. I'd like to lend a hand if necessary. That's great to hear, and every set of working hands is appreciated. Well, let me introduce you. Uh, Mr. Chaplin, yes. Well, while I uh, have everyone's attention, uh, I need to have a word, James. Sure, what's on your mind? Well, I didn't just come out here to help. I'm afraid I have some news. I don't think you're going to like it. I've recently been informed of a, a land claim by the Transylvania Company. Transylvania Company? Yes, a, a Judge Richard Henderson from Virginia owns the Transylvania Company, and, well, he claims to have purchased all of Kentucky from the Cherokee. He says he owns everything from the Ohio River to the Cumberland Hills. Now, wait a minute. This land? So you're saying some man named Henderson and his company are claiming that they own this land that we've been out here working and clearing? And, and the Cherokee? Who used to say it's the Cherokees for sale? Yeah. This is the same land that Virginia sent the survey parties back in 74. It's true, but it's not the worst of the news. Now, Henderson isn't just claiming that he owns it. Now, he's hired Daniel Boone to bring word to anyone who's made a settlement out here that you're now his tenants and he intends to collect. He's planning to work out renting agreements with anyone living in these parts. Boone! My God, I can't believe this. Boone was just out here with us, like, a few months ago. Right, yeah. So you're saying that he's helping this guy rip the land right out from underneath us? Well, that crooked dog. Well, so what you're saying is this fella Henderson, if he gets his way, we'll be paying rent on land we already own? Yes, sir. he'll be your landlord and he'll be no more than serfs. Now, wait a minute. We've had this land for over a year. We've cleared it, we've built our cabins, and we filed our claims. There ain't nobody going to come down here and try to take it from us. Yeah. The hell with right. Henderson. Well, that's why I'm really here, gentlemen. I don't have a good feeling about Henderson or this Transylvania company. Well, if Henderson has his way, a precedent would be established. You know, there are other land companies as well. Ohio, Illinois, Indiana. You know, if Henderson gets away with this, so will all the others. Captain, what are we going to do about this? Well, I think we need to wait, see which way the wind blows. I expect Boone out here any time now, so I'm going to stay here with you gentlemen until then. I want to hear it from the horse's mouth. Yeah. I, I can't thank you enough, George. But, and I think you're right. Right now, there's nothing more we can do. All right, man, let's get back to work. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I know that look. What's on your mind, James? You know, it, it isn't enough that we're out here defending ourselves from the Shawnee, how to get us every day. Now we're having to fight a war on two fronts. We will now have a 10-minute intermission and hope that the rain holds off. 